Hello and welcome to MIP TV and with us today is Bob Cook who's going to be reviewing another of his wonderful library. I'm sure your library must be huge. Is it like is it is it like the is it like the kind of national library, Bob? Do you have halls yeah. of books? <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's like Potter's library. You know, Harry Potter? Oh um, right. It's one of those wonderful libraries that stretches all over the house. Well, there you go. It's a, a book everywhere. There's a book everywhere. Fantastic. Fantastic. And we've got a really interesting book today because, um, you know, one of your favourite authors is Eric Byrne, the founder of right. Transactional Analysis. But this is quite an interesting one, isn't it? Because it's one that he started and never finished. Correct. And, yeah. it, and it is called um, Intuition and Ego States. Correct. He wrote these... He wrote the major part of these book, the, the articles, uh, which made chapters up in the book, um, between 1950 to 57, and actually formed some of his ideas on his early transaction analysis thinking. Yeah. So th this is this is really his early work, isn't it? This is. Yeah. So what, early, early, early work. So what do we, what do we learn from this this kind of early kind of incantation of of his work? Well, what we learn besides his ideas on intuition, which we'll talk about yeah. in a minute, but um, we talk about his um, early ideas from uh, his analyst, who was Eric Erickson, uh, who wrote the uh, Eight Stages of Men, I think, or yeah. the Seven Stages yeah, of yeah, Men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Paul Fadern, who was another analyst mm. at the time, uh, 47, 48, 49, something like that. And... Uh, um, Paul Verdun wrote about something called ego images, which is very similar to the idea of ego states. Oh, interesting. And basically, these chapters, if you like, they really paved the way to his first uh, early thinking on how, uh, on ego states, really, and what he uh, would call, um, well, Paul Verdun would anyway, ego state images, like three ego, three ego state images in one personality. So... If fame, it sort of like um, shows his early thinking, really. Yeah, and it's, it's I, I, one of the things that's always really fascinated me about TA. It, it it describes three distinct personalities within the individual, mm. where things like the humanistic movement, person centered, or even Gestalt, would just talk about a whole, a one, a, a, you know, a singularity. Right. And <clears throat> it feels to me like this book's. He's really started to kind of crystallise Burns' thinking, move, move, moving into his, his his big ideas. Would that be right? Yeah, and and let's just tell you the story behind that from the book. So, in um, after the war, Eric Byrne, who was then a, um, a psychiatrist, he was employed by the um, the army to um, and the insurance companies to make reports out from the uh, soldiers who came back from the Second World War who were suffering from post-traumatic stress. And he had to make uh, adjustments of their clinical health within 20 seconds. Good grief. 20 to 50 seconds. And he very quickly, through the ideas of intuition, started to realise that people came from different parts of the self when they presented. Oh. So within 20 to 80 seconds, or, or around that time, a couple of minutes, he started to realise people really operated from different parts of their cells when answering particular questions, such as, are you nervous? Um, questions like, um, I forget the list of them in the book, but you can read it when you get the book. Uh, and from that, he started to realise that people sometimes... Um, answered just like a little child because they'd regressed with post-traumatic stress or they answered like um, someone who might have been their father or their mother mm -hmm. and he, he was really judging the um, level, level of fragility or robustness in the here and now which he then called the ego state eventually adult ego state yes, that's, that's fascinating so almost he developed the ego state idea as a very quick shortcut because he was limited with time in his in his clinical assessments right and literally by by 
the response of the answer, how how someone response responded, he it's could he, yeah to the question he he could take a view on how fragile they were or where they were coming from. Yeah, yeah. in terms of their levels of function. Yeah. And from those early ego ego images, which Paul for you know uh, Paul for Dern talked anyway, he developed the idea that like that we come from three parts of the self, and they were distinct entities. And he called them uh, the well, they were quite long names those days. So he called them extra psyche, which is the extra psyche, which became yeah. the parent ego state, the neo psyche, which is the new state, which became the adult state. Yes. And the archaic state, which became the child ego state. Mm. Yeah, I, I've often wondered how much did Burn take from Freud's idea id ego and super ego? Because a lot of people say the, he kind of just transposed them, but it's not quite the case, is it? From what I've read. No. no. If you look at uh, Freud's idea on the unconscious, uh, which is what we're really talking about, um, uh, Freud's idea of the unconscious was split into three. Uh, you had the super ego, yeah. which you link to authority if you like. Uh, these are drives, by the way. Yeah. The uh, id, which is the infantile drives, and the ego, which is uh, really more in the here and now. But they were <coughs> a tripartite. Tri in other words, they were a three-part model of the unconscious. Yes. Where Eric Burns is a three-part model of the consciousness. Oh, how interesting. So, for example, uh, if you um, put somebody in a room, and you videoed them, and just um, say for five minutes, Eric Byrne would be able to say, from their behavior and observations, you could see in front of you a young child, a robust adult in here and now, or the mother and father from yesterday, consciously. So this would be something they're consciously doing, they yeah, know they're they doing it. So you say the parodies there. Yeah, yeah. They will be thinking, feeling, behaving, as if they were their parent figure. Yes. And their mother, their father, and they'd be acting out like that. Mm -hmm. Take the child ego state, thinking, feeling, and behaving as you were a kid. So you see in front of you the, the actions, the behaviours of that four-year-old, consciously. Mm -hmm. not, it's not a theory of unconsciousness, it's, it's actually a theory of consciousness. Yeah, because they're, they're, they're acting that out yeah. right in front of you. Yeah. Yeah, so if you were a therapist, you would be able to see the behaviours mm -hmm. of the regressed 10-year-old in front of you. So in terms of this book, how did Paul McCam McCormack, yeah. how did Paul McCormack kind of capture Burns' work? Because he, 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 he was kind of a, a half-finished book, wasn't it? He, he died before he could yeah. finish it. Yeah. So how did how did McCormack capture it? Did he take it in any different direction? No, not really. He was a Paul McCormack was actually employed by the organisation of Eric Byrne, um, which is, Eric Byrne started up in um, <coughs> sixty three, which is the International Transactional Analysis Association uh, formed in New York um, sixty three. Um, McCormack was employed, he was a therapist himself, and I think he was on the board of that organisation, um, to put these chapters together, uh, write a forward, and produce it in 1977, which he did. Um, and this book is full of the ideas I've just been talking about mm -hmm. at the beginning of transaction analysis, but also the idea of intuition. And intuition, of course, according to Eric Byrne, <coughs> had its genesis in what he called the little professor, a oh. small child. Yes. You know, that, oh, it's always fascinated me. Just to explain a little bit what the little professor is. Well, the little professor is really where I think creativity and science come together, as I said hmm. earlier, I think, uh, somewhere. Um, so the little professor is before, pre before operational thinking. It's, before, it's very, very early cognition. Um, and it's more based on um, really feelings hmm. because the infant, very early in life, uh, before cognitive, before real concrete cognitive thinking, sees the world through feelings. Mm. So it's a feeling-based system in that early, what Byrne called, intuitive functioning. Uh, and he would argue that the great psychotherapists really need to employ their intuition um, as well as their clinical observations from a scientific framework. And putting the two together 
makes the genius of the modern day psychotherapist. Yes, it's interesting, isn't it? Because one's a a evidence based discipline, mm. and the other is a more metaphysical hunch, isn't it? You, yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. And what a wonderful combination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In in insight and science joined together. Yeah, Darwin, for example, said that if you look at the animal kingdom, that, um, you know, animals uh, instinctively, uh, very quickly, mm. um, choose the actions at arms like an intuitive um, level. And a lot of theories would say about the human race, that within a seconds, they've made an intuitive hunch, if you like, about and judgments of the people they meet. Mm. Yeah, and yeah. that's an intuitive place. And what Eric Byrne does in this book is break down levels, levels of intuition. And he, he, he really does talk about um, how those two uh, disciplines come together, um, intuition and science, in the making of a modern-day therapist. So when we're thinking about this book and, and where its place is, where is... Where is it? Where is its place? Who who would be best served by reading this? Um, I think people interested in intuition to start with. Yeah, people yeah. interested in um, how we can use intuition uh, in our general lives as a psychotherapist, and as well as clinical observation and science, and also students because yes. of TA because it's a historical document. It goes back seventy years, and it is a glimpse into Eric Burns' early thinking. Mm before he actually developed his concrete um, model of transaction analysis. I always think that's so useful if you're a student just to get right back to the roots of the theory mm. because I think it's, I think for me, it's, it, it's kind of like the fundamental building blocks. You could, once you get to the, 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 the root of it, then you can work backwards as opposed to starting at the end and working, <laughs> working towards it. Well, this is certainly the roots, yeah. because he hadn't formed his con he hadn't formed his four blocks of transaction analysis um, at this time, and the four blocks were ego states, which is a theory of personality, yeah. um, transaction analysis proper, which is a theory of communication, script, which is an unconscious life plan played out uh, throughout life, and games, which yes. is repetitive compulsion. So he hadn't put the whole lot together. He was still um, grasping the whole ideas of uh, ego state images and ego states and if you like I think from his this is interesting really from the um, intuition of this book and writing it he started to really play around with the ideas that we're like three people in one psychic skin yes yes that's that's an interesting concept isn't it oh. uh, you know, three three in individuals yeah so a must read really for students and for anyone who's interested in in how intuition works the book's called intuition and ego states it's by paul mccormack and what we'll do is we'll put a link in the comments bar below we'll put a link in there and right at the end of the video we'll i'll put a picture of the book up yeah um, it's burns writings that he paul mccormack brought alive really yes yeah he edited them he was the editor yeah. of them and, and and structured them that's right yeah so yeah, so maybe maybe one for the Christmas list for if, if those for those of you yeah. celebrate Christmas or holidays, yeah. if you have a, yeah. <laughs> put it on here because we're making this around around November. Yeah. So yeah. You know, where where creativity and cognition come together makes the genesis genesis of a modern day therapist. Yeah, yeah, that that space between metaphysics and and science and and you know that. Isn't isn't that where psychotherapists work all the time? That yeah, it has to be. Yeah, it yeah. has to be, Rory. It just has to be. Yeah, yeah. So Bob Cook, as always, thank you very much. Thank you.